I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. On the podcast today, I get the chance to meet Liu Swako, who's also known around town as Triangulador. After scheduling a time for us to meet, he invited me over to an apartment that he's actually turned into his own studio. The conversation started so quickly that I just turned on the recorder and we just started talking as he was showing me some of the works that he had scattered all over the room. They're just, I'm putting them on clear sleeves. Not only like preserves them better, uh, it makes them easier to go through. They kind of look like giant trading cards. <laughs> that's that's an interesting, yeah, definitely. Uh, I like I like that. There's a lot of them that look like they have ridges or something. Like, what that's, are you? That's heavy, heavy body text, uh, acrylic. Uh, it's like toothpaste, basically. If you just leave it sitting like that, it'll dry up and it'll harden. Okay. So this is what happens with the paint, and I obviously do it on purpose. If you see the background of it, there's like a sharp line. Like a, a sharp, you see the, the transition from green to red? Yeah. How the sharp line happens and the same thing over here. That happens because I apply lines of paint of the same color. And then when one of these, you can just pull the paint. What is this? It's uh, like a wedge. Uh, you can use it for texturizing and moving paint around. I don't use brushes for any of my work. I'll have brushes around, but I you won't ever see them like functional. Like they're, like, <laughs> you know. Spray. That's the way mine usually were as well. Right. That's just because I hated cleaning up. Uh, I mean, that's part of it too. But uh, but it's just like I don't really, I don't think I'm detailed like that with paintings. Most of my paintings are very abstract. Yeah. So you know, it doesn't really have to be to a certain level or whatever. We talked briefly before I started recording about the how you got started. Tell me more about the person that you started with and you said he inspired you to keep going. You knew of him ahead of time or did you guys... I, I No, I interacted with him on Instagram. I like messaged him and he was nice enough to like be like, yeah, let's uh, let's meet up, you know. Uh, but he was in Mexico City when I hit him up and uh, I was here in Madison and I'm originally from Mexico City. So okay. I did, I, like I asked him like, is there anything, you know, anything you need, anything, just let me know. I'll connect you with my friends and stuff. Stefan, Stefan Mateo, he's has a lot of work around town. When he came back to Madison, because he, he's originally from here, he met up with me. We talked about the walls and we worked like his work and what he does and how he does it. And that uh, just made it more real for me to, to be able to, to give it a shot. You know, when you see someone who just goes about it in like smoothest way, then you don't have to like, you don't see it as a challenge. You see it like, oh, well, if he can do it, then I can do it, you know. But you saw it and it was like similar. That's it kind well, of sparked. I didn't really, I wasn't drawing. I wasn't painting before at all. Like, like was, nothing. Like you had no background. Yeah, no. Like I, I've, I've done like sketching and, and like lettering kind of thing. But yeah. not like I can't draw a face or an eye or anything like Well, that. that's a huge jump. What made you go like, all right, let's hook up and do something? Because you were just following him on Instagram. And I wanted him to have a mural, like paint a mural in my, in, right here in the wall. Like I Oh, wanted, just at your place? Yeah, I wanted to pay him to get like, you know, get a mural. But okay. then we, he sat down with me. We talked for like a solid maybe hour, hour and a half. The guy left and then... Right there, I was like, yo, man, that was cool. Like, I, I wish I could do that, you know? I keep telling people this, but uh, it's weird. I don't wake up in the middle of the night, and that night I woke up like at 4.30 a.m. And I just wanted to paint something. I really wanted to paint something. Huh. So uh, I went outside, and I remember it was like super like windy, and because there was like a big branch outside, like a huge branch like right in the, in the front of the house now i had this spray paint which, which was like chalk paint like you can spray things and it looks just like spray paint but it's actually chalk you can wash it off so i took that out i just started spray painting the, the driveway and the first shape that i came out and like the first thing that came out of the, the can was the triangle so that's where the name triangulador comes from like from triangle making in spanish that's what it means but yeah, that, that's the first shape that, or the first thing that I drew, and I just kept doing them. Next thing you know, I had half of a driveway filled with triangles. So I was like, oh, cool, I do this is cool, but I gotta stop, you know, I'm gonna get in trouble. So I came back and I went to bed, and next morning I went and I got that huge uh, uh, foam board. Like basically, I got the biggest foam board that you could get at the art store, you know? Right. Because that's the cheapest way to get the biggest surface, you mm -hmm. know? Otherwise, like something like that in a wood panel would be like 300 bucks, you know? That's what I did, and I taped it, and I painted. Yeah, I just painted that and 
Stefan came by uh, when I was doing it and he's like, yo, let me paint something on that. And I was like, for sure. <laughs> and now we have it to the point that uh, it's like a collaboration, you know, he comes over and sometimes he adds things to it. And you guys still actively work on it. Yeah. And we haven't showed it and we haven't, I, we don't really have a plan for it. It's just like, it kind of became part of my wall kind of thing. Like it doesn't move anywhere. <laughs> So people would leave mattresses on the side of the road or they'd move and leave them out. And you decided to use those as a canvas. Right. I'm uh, around Langdon a lot. A lot of people throw a lot of things around this neighborhood because uh, kids that are from out of town. So whenever they move out, they throw everything away. You know, they don't want to deal with the donating or trying to fi find out what to do with the stuff. Right. So they just throw it away. That was my my only way to paint on the, with spray paint. You know, that was my only way of practicing in, in big surfaces. I thought that was brilliant when I, the first time I met you and you told me about that. And it's like, it's so simple, but it makes so much sense. Again, I did it for myself. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to get to paint. Like I wanted to have available space to paint. And it's hard to go to like someone you don't know and tell them, hey, I like your wall. Can I paint something on it? You know, like. <laughs> 99 times out of 100, they will say, no, you can't paint on my wall. You know, who are you? And don't talk. <laughs> Why did you walk up to my house? Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but that's the thing that it changes, you know, when you keep doing it and you keep practicing on and whatever it is, if you do it long enough then people are like, hey, can you paint on my wall? You know, from like, hey, I don't know you and why are you asking me this? So like, hey, can I pay you to like do whatever you like on my wall? So is it considered vandalism, though? No, I, I mean, I don't think it is, no, but no, it, it makes me wonder, like somebody's got to come up and be like, hey, you can't I mean, spray paint on that. It has been like less than a handful of people. Honestly, it's just like two or three people that have been. But I think it has been more than like a different subject. I don't think it has to do anything absolutely with the, what I'm doing. Yeah, it's more like my look brown dude with spray paint running around painting things right you never know if he's like just painting trash or he's painting like something else and yeah. you know i i see it in a bunch of different ways that's why i don't really like get upset some of them yeah semi race you know like you know <laughs> immediately that there's it's a color thing yeah uh some some of them it's just you know they just see spray paint and then they're thinking that you're gonna destroy or vandalize something or that you know it's just most of the time it's just lack of knowledge of what i'm doing yeah. but the, the, the good thing is that i always carry cards with me like mm -hmm. business cards i give them a business card immediately and i'm like hey feel free to call the cops if you have a problem you know i'm not doing anything illegal have you ever had a run-in yeah the cops have been called like several times but at huh. this point like they know of me so right they show up and they're like oh this this guy hey how you doing <laughs> keep doing what you're doing that's actually pretty cool though that's the way i started like the first time that i was gonna paint something i i pulled over a cop car and i was like hey man uh i like to spray paint but i don't i don't really? do it illegally i was like how do you feel about me doing this is this okay and he was like yeah man as long as you don't do it on a, on on anyone's property yeah it's just trash oh. so i just started doing it now like i've done it on safe street like in the middle of the night or in like in the middle of like a saturday night when there's a lot of people around done it in the middle of the day also on uh -huh. safe street and they know that i'm not first of all drawing anything offensive i'm not doing anything to anybody i'm not bothering or trespassing anyone's property so they're like dude but I like zero you know and then uh and people like it like people send me messages and shit all the time like mm -hmm. hey thanks for painting this or like sometimes they send me hey this there's a mattress here there's a this and there and yeah like, they do it all the time and and it's cool you know because then it it gives you sometimes when you want to paint outside it gives you like immediately have to you have a place to go to paint instead of having to go and look for for stuff to paint you know mm -hmm. or having to ask for pe uh, people for walls to paint it's fun. It's fun. Once people started like looking at him, taking photos, and I started putting my Instagram. When I first started following your Instagram, it did seem mysterious because it would just be like pictures of like, this is here, like basically go find this. Right. And there was no real pictures of you or anything. Right. It started to make me think like, is there more than one person doing this? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the thing that I struggle with the most, I think, to uh, have my image of my face. I think I, I like more the factor of like them getting excited about the art. And I think I find it more fascinating to know that, like, to talk to somebody about something that I do and they have no idea that I do it, I think that's more fascinating than hearing uh, compliments or stuff like that, you know? Like, it's cool that people like it, it's cool, but to a certain point, it just gets to, like, 
cool, man. Like, it's just, I'm, I just do it, you know, that's a thing. And like, anyone can do it. And like, mm-hmm. if they just really want to do something, whatever it is, like, it's just a matter of doing it over and over and over and over and over again, you know, like, yeah. and literally, that's what I do. Like, I stay home when I'm not at work, I'm home painting or doing something with paint or planning a project or talking to someone or having a meeting just like we're right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's, I do that a lot because I just, I like to talk about like the the works and, and I like to see other people's work. Some people just work really cool, you know, and I met this guy who's really, really like cool art. He has really talented, like class A art. Oh, who? Martel, he, he has like really cool geometric shapes cut. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. I'll show yeah. it to you. But yeah, he uh, he comes. He came and he was like, "Dude, you can see all the expression in your in your in your pain and your strokes and stuff." And it's just shit that I don't really think about, you know. So yeah. it's, seeing the same work with different eyes, it just makes you seem like that's when I realized, like, man, everything's literally about perspectives. Like how yeah. what whatever you know you want to see it. Like sometimes I see things and I'm like, "Dude, this is cool." And the person next to you, like, "Dude, that's the worst thing I've seen," you know. Yeah. So it's just literally a lot of me doing. He- a, a bunch of work and being here by myself a lot of the time it just gets you thinking about like wow there's like so much more that than you think mm-hmm. out there after the break dealing with critics with the fact that Liu puts his stuff on mattresses even though it's okay for him to do it. I wondered if there were still people that reacted like it was vandalism or if he received criticism in any way. And if so, how does he deal with that? The people who like it, they're not saying like, oh, I hate this or why do you do it this way? There's like the select few people who say that. And for some reason, those are the ones that we listen to or those are the ones that get to us. Those those are the ones that literally really don't matter. You know, like it's just the ones that you don't. They're the ones that you're not going to win over anyway. And that's another big lesson that I've learned from me doing this that is just like I don't need to have approval from people I don't like Mm -hmm. I don't have to have approval from people that don't contribute to my everyday life in any way like they don't have any say in what I do because they don't pay my bills they don't feed me they don't do anything so like why would I listen to someone who doesn't have any effect in my life? Uh, why do we do that? I've learned not to do it anymore, you know? Like, you do, because I'm horrible I, at I it. No, I, I learned by doing this, by being here by myself. Like, it's just like me connecting dots and a lot of things. It's just like everything that I do in the art, I treat like my personal life. I hustle, I do it my best, and I do it for myself, and I... I enjoy doing what I do, you know, and that's why I do it. And that's the same way I like work with everything. But it was it was nice to finally sit in, around my work and understand like this is not for anybody, you know, like mm-hmm. and that's I think that's when things work the best, when you don't do things for anybody but yourself because you're literally just feeding off your own joy. And it's yeah. just like it's a it's a no motivation thing. You know, people ask me, what do you motivate or where you get inspired from? It's like just doing it, man. Like mm-hmm. I it's just. Once you find your your thing, it's just, it's really easy. It's just like, if you like playing video games and someone gives you a console, hey, you want to play? It's like, if, if you get paid to like do something you you really love and you just, it do, it's not work anymore, you know? And yeah. it gets to the point that after you put certain amount of hours, a certain amount of time, a certain amount of hustle, you become a little bit more independent or more able to say no to certain things that you're not okay with. or mm-hmm. Or sometimes like, it's... It sounds cocky to turn down projects, but it's not. It's just like, I'm doing this for the love of doing it. I'm happy as it is. I don't need money to be happy. I I feel like money will help me get to other points that I can make doper things that I want to make, but it's not going to increase my level of happiness. Like, you know, I'm happy doing it as it is. You're kind of like, I'll take it if it comes. Yeah. It's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied with the, the, what I got right now. I might not have the biggest studio or the most tools or the most space, but man, I'm, I'm enjoying myself and, and somehow I'm getting the work out the door, which helps me create other cooler doper stuff you know that's yeah. the way i look at it it's not like oh how when am i gonna buy nicer or fancier clothes or like a brand new car it's like not like that it's more like now i got this what's the next cooler thing that i can make you know like that's that's the way i look at it so and it has happened many times that i sell a painting and literally the, the person that bought it like leaves and i'll go running to the art store and just spend the whole fucking money you know right. like it's just 
it's fascinating and I, it has taught me a lot about myself. You do this for yourself, but we're surrounded by tons of stuff that you're making. So, so what are you doing with this stuff? I sometimes do uh, temporary uh, exhibitions. Right now I have the stuff of communication stuff you, you, you saw, right? Yes, I saw that. Like always doing galleries or showing, hanging out my work somewhere, like uh, some space or... You know, whatever the, the place is. Right now, I'm like, I'm just trying to get, like, a, like I said, a bigger warehouse, maybe space, mm -hmm. turn into a living space so I can have a little bit more room. And honestly, the reason why I want more room is so I can make bigger stuff. <laughs> so yeah. I can, like, so the conversation with, like, buying pieces always yeah. goes, like, how much for this? X amount of money. And they're like, oh, I'll give you, I don't know, half of it. And, like, dude, okay. this is not, like, a barter kind of thing. You yeah. know, like, this stuff here... It's not like money for me sitting around. Mm -hmm. It's like pieces sitting around. Like I'm not doing them to get rid of them. I'm doing them because I like them, right? So I don't mind having them around, even if they're in stack and I can't see them all at once. Right. I don't mind having them. It's like having a bunch of records. It's exactly you're not listening to all of them all the time. Right. And you're not all, always thinking like, hey, I gotta get rid of them. I gotta sell them. You know, like right. that's that's not the way you think about records. You know, right. you're just thinking about your own collection. Yeah, yeah, I'm growing my own collection. Cool. I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah. You know, if I I can afford it it would probably be three times the, the amount <laughs> then if someone comes and decides hey this is a really cool record mm -hmm. do you mind if i is there any way i can buy it and you're like sure you're a decent person that i would like kind of have this record sure yeah. i'll sell i'll sell it to you you know it's not it's not a, a product to me it's more like a thing that i did that i liked and someone appreciates and wants to take home with them and yeah. put it on their wall sure you know but again it's that's why I usually don't talk about money. People ask me how much for this piece or how much. It's like, hey, no, what about you come over? We talk a little bit. I get to know who you are. And, you know, if you're cool enough or, like, as a person, if I think you're a decent human being, mm -hmm. sure, well, then we'll talk about whatever monetary value I'm willing to let it go for. And if you're okay with it, then sure you know kind of thing yeah it's no more it's not like oh yeah give me 200 bucks take it home you kind of like to know who it's going home with too i really do i really do and uh there's only one person that i don't know they bought a painting for me that i had at winery i did a little event for a winery oh, no kidding. i went on vacation so they bought it while i was in vacation and the owner of the winery gave me the check but i never got to meet who bought it and it was a really cool piece. So I'm trying to, I, I like to meet the people. That's interesting. Like you were gone, they sold it and you're like, I need to know who has it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, again, since I don't do this for the money, uh -huh. I like my work to go to people that I respect to a certain degree, you know, or I like at least know who they are. Like, yeah. again, I'm not chasing the money. I'm chasing the, the what's cool. I've been surrounding myself with cool people. So it's a good situation I to be in. I want it to just keep, a, keep the ball rolling, man. I mean, rather surround myself with a lot of cool people that are gonna motivate me and, and, and like put me in the mood to just keep creating more, you know, instead yeah. of just trying to go straight to the bank. You were from Mexico City and came here. So why did you come here? I met a woman online about 12 years ago, came visit. After a few months of talking, I came to visit and then she went down to visit. Last day she was there, she asked me to come live with her. So. Oh. I did that and uh, it was cool. I was 20 at the time. I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot. It was my first relationship. So having a first relationship in a completely different country, living in a you know completely different household and not knowing what the hell is going on. Cause I mean, I kind of knew cause I've been in the States before. Mm -hmm. It's just a completely different everything. You know, you have a different outlook in life. You see, you take the best from home, you leave the worst at home, uh -huh. and then you mix it with the best from here and you leave the worst from here so that, you know, you start like kind of building something from that, you know, and trying to like not fuck it up, you know, trying to put the pieces together in a way that works. It's interesting to have a different background and different culture. Like I wouldn't, I don't think I would have done any of this if I was back home because mm. it's not appreciated i don't think really? as much okay uh maybe it has changed from uh last time i was there i mean in my mind when i was there i would never saw myself doing this ever like again it's just life it's just a matter of listening to the stuff that is going on paying attention listening to the signs mm. and then just following your passions man i i feel like that's a big mistake that we all do because i'm saying we because i did that for a while just being afraid of like following your your itch like keep working on it you can always make a living doing anything you want if you're really doing it for the right reason i don't know it happened it happened at 28 i'm 30 now 
So it just it just fascinated to just sit here and the easiest way for me to do is start doing the amount of work that I've been doing. It's to decide that there wasn't a wrong way to do it. So what if you do it? Like, right. <laughs> are you going to die? Exactly. Like, yeah. maybe if you were talking about parachuting or something like that, then that's a different subject, you know? But, <laughs> yes. I mean, it, most cases in life, it's like if, if, if you fuck up, you can start all over. Again. It's actually something I've said at multiple places where I've worked on things. Like, I've worked in a restaurant or the food industry or something, and people get really upset. And I'm like, nobody's going to die because of this. So good. there's, it's, why are unless we reacting this way? Unless you're allergic to peanuts and you're just See, you know, feeding them peanuts. I never but considered that, that part. You're right. That's the, that's the thing, you know, you're just trying to be a perfectionist. That's the biggest yeah. obstacle. Yes. Because you're never going to be perfect right away. You're never going to get running before you, you start walking, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just, that's life. you like, want to deliver the best product immediately that's not gonna that's not gonna do anything you know i never got to where i i got to paint like big gyms or big walls or have big events just by randomly it's not my first gig i've been working on it for a minute i've been doing my, my own work you know mm -hmm. and people don't see that they just see the end product and they're like oh dude this is cool right. they don't see like how many uh, pieces of paper I ruined? They right. didn't see how many, uh, you know, pieces that I had like already done. And I was like, dude, this is cool. And then I knocked some paint over it and ruined the whole thing. You know, like you don't know how many times I had like a really cool paint and then I add a certain color and I'm like, fuck, I just like ruined the whole thing. You know, right. and I like just kept doing, kept going until the point that I'm satisfied. And that's, and that's how I do work. And you don't know that that's a bad color until you've tried it. And then you're like, well, I know not to do that again. And that's, and that's the beauty of it that you learn from that. Like it's, it talks to you. You just gotta like, and that's the same thing with life. It just, if you do certain things, you have certain feelings and certain satisfaction that certain like this, like this concerns or certain uh, negative emotions from doing certain things. So you just gotta learn to be like, oh, well, I should stick to the positive feels. I should stick stick to the things that are making me feel good as a as a person. It's making me feel whole, and it's not mm -hmm. instant gratification. If you never would have done it, what are some things you never would have experienced? Okay, just because yeah. you did this in general, I create a lot of friendships, and I met people that I I don't think I would have have met in in a different scenario. Like if it would, if I wasn't painting, I would have known probably like. 50% of the people I know nowadays. Again, when you're doing it for yourself, you fall into this cycle of like, it's like food to the soul, man. Like you just, you feel in a certain vibe that you just want to keep feeling that, you know, like it's like, dude, I want to keep this positivity, good vibe going. And it just, when you just find yourself that are surrounded by cool people that you trust with anything with your home and you know, that's, that's cool. Like it makes your life a lot easier in every single aspect. And you, you don't have to worry about bullshit. You just have to worry about like the things that you want to do instead of having to worry about negativity and, yeah. oh, I have this. And like, I don't know. I just, I don't have shitty friends. I really don't. Like I don't, I, I surround myself with people who I respect as people. Once you get to that point of just having legit good friends that will support you, it's just another less thing to worry about you know and it's a very uh crazy weird way to look at it, uh, the way I, I do things but it's it has worked out like 30 years of my life and i lived a happy life man like i really haven't had that much struggle yeah i come from a different country and i work in, in the restaurant industry for a minute and think mm -hmm. i've done things that i thought that i've never worked at there have been all like learning experiences Everything that's worth it, you know, like everything yeah. that's worth it, it's never going to be just given to you. You don't appreciate it nearly as much, mm -hmm. you know. You need to have the struggle. You need to have the, the grind. You need to have the fuck ups. You need to have all these situations in life in order to become to a certain point. If you'd like to learn more about Leo, you can check out his website at triangulador.com or follow at Triangulador on Instagram. The music for this episode is by my band Lorenzo's Music at lorenzosmusic.com. And if you like this podcast, you can listen to more episodes on Apple Music, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening, and until next time, so long. Mm -hmm.